Hey friends, my name's Cody. I am a 3D artist, full-time. It's what I do for a living. And so I just, I just thought I would give you my perspective of the new M1 MacBook Pro. And then also, I'll just tell you which one I would buy if, if I were purchasing one right now. For the last five years, Apple has been teasing its entrance into the 3D space. And, and they even tease us with like the people from Maxon and people from Blender and even studios like Man vs. Machine. They have them come be a part of their keynotes. They talk about how incredible Apple products were for creating this 3D thing. But then that's where the hype ends. Like that keynote ended and I'm out in the 3D industry and I don't know anybody that's on a, on a Mac computer. Okay, like that's, that's where we've been. And that's why today's release is so significant and there's so much excitement wrapped around it because Apple is finally doing what it does best. It's, it's actually taking a significant stance in the industry and it did that thing where it looks around this new territory, like the 3D industry, and then it just says, oh yeah, we can do that way, way, way better. I am talking negatively about Apple, but I'm, I'm genuinely not. Um, it, Maybe if I would look back and see that this whole tease and lead up was, was not worth anything, then I'd be talking about them a little more cynically. But the fact that this delay was actually because now we have a product that's, that's going to change the industry forever, I can't be mad at that. I won't go into the specs with you today because we've all seen them. Um, and, and honestly, Apple has proven its value because of the MacBook Air, and we've seen that that is totally lived up to the hype, the M1 MacBook Air, that is. And so I'd rather focus on something that I think is even more significant than the actual performance. The thing that I think is most important in these MacBook Pros, specifically for 3D artists, is that our industry is about to level up in terms of stability. The 3D tools. 3D tools are notoriously unstable. And it's the number one thing that stifles my creativity. I'll be just in the zone going and then my programs crash or freeze or I have to go update a GPU driver or something. It's just all disjointed and it ends up taking away so much of my flow. Well, that's the benefit. When, when all these things move under this, this one chip, Apple combining their GPU, CPU, and RAM into this one mega chip, it's just gonna create so much stability for us that, that we won't even know what to do with our extra time. I realize that we're not totally out of the woods yet, even on a, on a MacBook Pro, because uh, all these software creators have to, you know, go in and make sure that everything functions properly in this new chip. But, but I just think we have a much greater shot of, of achieving true stability on this than we would ever in this PC ecosystem. One last thing, and then I'll talk about which one I think you should purchase. At this keynote, I've never actually seen a company listen to creators as much as Apple evidently did. They took their tiny little MacBook Pros that, that had no ports on them and they beefed them up. These suckers are chunky now, which is what everybody wants. Fit as much possible stuff as you can under the hood for us, please. And then they added ports galore. It's just a dream come true. And then the final icing on the cake was this pro display that they added. It's, yeah, they, they really listen. Uh, now onto the purchase. And let me make a statement before I get in too far. I'm not actually putting a MacBook Pro in my cart today. I currently have this Razer Blade RTX 2080 Max-Q. Oh my gosh, that's such a long name. Um, and, and it's okay. I mean, it's, it's doing the job for me. And although it does suffer all those, those instability things that I mentioned with PCs, it's still, I'm not somebody that just wants to go buy new tech just to have it. And so as this thing degrades, and as I see my programs and plugins all become, uh, very compatible with this new chip and everything, that's when I'll be making that jump. So in the near future, I, I imagine that I have like another year with this guy. Even though I'm not buying the MacBook Pro today, that doesn't mean that I haven't gone through and specced one out just because I'm dreaming about it. It's a very easy decision for me. Uh, I would be getting the M1 Max for sure as somebody that depends on power and performance and speed it's a no-brainer that I would max capacity the CPU, the GPU, and the RAM, okay? 
The one thing that I would skimp on though is the SSD. That's the only category. That's the only category on a Mac that you can go back and have a rethink on it. You can say, oh man, I wish I would have bought the four terabyte SSD. Then you can go to the store and you can add some externally. So that is just a no brainer that if you need to save money in one category, skimp on that one. Realize we're now talking about a very expensive computer and that's not possible for everyone to purchase, but I will tell you that I roughly spent $4,200 on my setup, which is this Razer Blade RTX 2080 Max-Q. I love saying that name. And then also the Razer Core X eGPU, which has an RTX 2080 Ti in it. Okay, so that was like $4,200 combined, I think. Maybe even a little bit more, maybe like 45. Okay, but you could get the MacBook Pro with this with better specs in almost every category. The GPU is probably going to be better than this combined with my eGPU. The CPU is going to run circles around this machine. I mean, you're you're when we're talking through simulations and everything, you're going to be able to do cloth particle simulations a zillion times faster than than I would ever be able to do on this machine. So it's like yeah, it is super expensive, but compared to what's out there, it's, it's really not like they're robbing the bank. If you can't max everything out, excluding storage, you know, we're not, we're not maxing that sucker out. I would just say, resist the urge to pull the trigger on it right now. Save up for a few months and just get as high as you can. You may still not be able to reach the top tier, the absolute max capacity and all this, but try to get as high as you can. Again, this is specifically for 3D artists. Everyone else, like if you're doing music or Photoshop, go low. But but we depend on this sort of thing and we're only moving closer to real-time rendering and we're just gonna want this speed in every way. So just, just go big is my only advice. All right, friends, as somebody that has been in the PC world for like three years now, I'm just very excited about the news today. I'm excited that there's potential that I can become an Apple boy once again. If you're buying one of these, uh, let me know. I'll be super excited for you and also very curious to hear how the whole experience is. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have an amazing week. I'll see you next Tuesday.